So the question now is how do we relate shear stress or shear force into um, the convention uh, of dealing with stresses within soils? Well, if we return back to uh, this um, shape, which is, represents an element of material, and it could be soil, but it could be any material, and we know that this material is static, okay? So for this material to be, well, to be stationary, um, it has to fulfill two um, conditions. The first is static equilibrium, and that means that the material isn't sort of moving around on the, on the board here, um, but we're putting two forces into it. So what that means is that if we resolve those two forces into the same reference plane, and I've uh, recorded another video which shows how to rec um, rotate forces into, the same, into different reference planes, but if you ro rotate A and B into the same reference plane, they should be equal and opposite. Um, okay, so let's rotate A and B into the vertical reference plane. And to do that, um, we know that B has a vertical component. Uh, and that vertical component is equal to B uh, cosine beta. And A has a vertical component, and that's equal to A cosine alpha. So for static equilibrium to be true, A cosine alpha must equal to A be equal to B cosine beta. But if this material is stationary, it must also satisfy rotational equilibrium. And that means that the material doesn't rotate about its, its center point. So to determine that, we need to resolve uh, A and B into the horizontal component. So if, you ro if we resolve A into its horizontal component, it would be a, a shear force acting on this surface. And that would be equivalent to A sine alpha. And similarly, B has a shear force. acting at B sine beta. So we can get rid of the uh, blue lines. So um, for rotational equilibrium to be true, if we take moments about the, the center point, and I've included a, another video which shows you how to take moments, if we take moments about the, the center point, um, we have to, for rotational equilibrium, we have to um, balance the um, clockwise moments with the anti-clockwise moments. So for rotational equilibrium, the, um, the, the, the moments uh, that are acting in this direction uh, are A sine alpha and B sine beta. So you can see that the moments caused by these, uh, these two forces are acting in the same direction. So if we take the distance from the center to be x, but we take uh, a sine alpha and add it to b sine beta, both of those acting through um, a distance of x. So multiply both of those by x. Now those must be equal to, um, or there must be another force acting in an opposite direction if this material is uh, in rotational equilibrium. So what forces are acting in this direction? Well, um, those must be uh, shear forces acting on the two planes that don't have any normal force. So there must be a, two forces acting in these directions. And if we give those just a generic shear force, let's say call that tau, then the moments acting in this direction would be uh, equal to the moments acting in the other direction. So we can say that that would be equal to two, uh, two x times by tau, or two tau x. Um, and in this case, what we can do is just cancel out the x's. So what we're left with here is for rotational equilibrium is A sine alpha plus B 
sine beta equals 2 tau. So an important observation comes uh, out of this, and that is that um, we can have shear force or shear stress acting on a plane that doesn't have any normal stress or normal force acting on it. So we're going to return to this again when we, we start thinking about um, calculating uh, shear stress and normal stress in different reference planes um, and how we relate that on a uh, more circle diagram. But um, it's really important now just to note down that we we, we can get shear stress acting on planes that we maybe might not expect it to be on, and certainly planes where we don't get any normal force. Uh, 